Hey, what's up guys? So they have the Row the Head blog out and I kind of wanted to see what they had to say. And so this is for today, the 29th. And let's begin. This is by CG Top Hat. It was posted a couple hours ago. It says, it's time again for the Row the Head. As CG Eric mentioned last week, I'll be taking over writing the Row the Head post. If you haven't seen my name pop up before, I'm the live producer. The live operations team is responsible for the daily day operations of the game. We introduce new characters, ships, and events. I'm really excited to talk about what's coming next. With that said, let's step in the cantina and see what the future has in store for the next few months. So, as we know, the light side uh, territory battle will most likely be what's next, and they say the battle rages on. It's been a few weeks since the Separatists might landed, and we've already seen guilds do incredible things. Tim Instinct and Mighty Chlorians were the first guilds to get at least 30 stars. Congratulations to both of them, and good luck on the march to 33 stars. So that must mean that nobody's full cleared the territory battle yet. Not even, like you know, the Mega Woes. That's interesting. Like the Mega Woe guilds. Uh, also about 80 players have beaten the Accolade. Only 80 players have beaten the Accolade. Wow. That's significantly less than I thought. I mean, I thought there would be a lot of people that have like the maxed out things already, but only 80? Huh. Crush the Republic Scum and Conquer the Geno. Now I know it's hard. I know, I, I know the special... And then it's hard because I watched McMola do it. I watched Arnold do it. And at some point I'm going to be able to do it because I'm working on the Gene Oceans. And it does look exceptionally difficult. And even with, you know, full gear 12, I've seen, even, you know, gear 12 with the plus pieces and all that I, in Zavas, I've still seen people failing. So maybe you really do have to have it quite maxed out. Uh, let's continue here. It says, you may be wondering, is this the end of our focus on the Clone Wars era, far from it. After reworking the Geon Oceans, we asked ourselves, what could we work on? Uh, let's see, what could we work on next? How could it be the Clone Wars without taking a pass at the clone troopers themselves? We're going to be updating a select few of the clones as they prepare for future battles. We hope fans aren't too divided on the ones we selected. We've gone through something like 500 different iterations on which one we should update. <laughs> um, so not all of the clones are being updated. A select few, but we are getting some clone trooper updates. That's awesome. Uh, personally, I would like to see a sergeant get the update, maybe the heavy. Um, and then next, if I had, let's see, who would I, else would I want? Maybe uh, Cody to get a little bit better. I, Cody and, and sergeant, maybe. Um, would be my guess, but, you know, we'll have to see, okay? But that's cool. Now we know for sure uh, that we are, in fact, going to be getting the clone troopers Rework, I'm sure McMullen is extremely happy right about now. Okay, moving right along here. Our Clone Wars invasion ultimately culminates in the release of the second half of the Gene Ocean Territory battle, the light side, okay? On the light side, you'll battle against the dreaded droid army and the villains of the Separatist Council. We've got new units making appearance to support the war effort that will leave you slapping your forehead in disbelief. Okay, so this is a little bit of a teaser. Slapping your forehead in disbelief. Uh, on Reddit, I saw some people uh, point out that this could either be Jar Jar, because it's like you can't believe that they're putting in Jar Jar, or it could also be uh, Ki Ivy Mundo, I think is how you pronounce his name, or Mundo or something. Um, and he has an exceptionally large forehead. You could call it a five head. And I think that they could be also referencing that. Plus we have seen him, you know, on the other side of things. So that is a very strong possibility. We have a few other surprises in store, but revealing more would strain our benevolence. Here's another, <laughs> here's another hint, drop of the ship perhaps. You won't have to scavenge for long as the light sides reek of great content. Reeks of great content. I also think the reeks is got to be a. Uh, doesn't that have to be some kind of tip like reeks, binks? Uh, you know, maybe I don't know. It's just the light side reeks of great content doesn't seem to be a, a phrase that would throw. I feel like that's a hint on something. Like, what's a character that would stink? I don't know. All right, unlocking iconic power. Star Wars is a galaxy filled with objects just as recognizable as the characters that wield them. Darth Vader's mask, Hermit Yoda's cane, Rey's quarterstaff, Darth Maul's lightsaber, and more. While we've done our best to represent many of these objects on the character models themselves, we believe that there is something inherently mythical about these iconic items. Yeah, I would agree. I think mean, that's a fair point. Traditionally, progression and the power in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes has been represented by abstracted stars, gear, or modifications to your character card. In the coming months, we're excited 
to begin talking about the next phase of character progression in the game, revolving around unlocking and mastering power represented by a unique item associated with each and every character in the game. Okay, so this is probably something like an R, the, they're going to call it like artifacts or something, if I had to guess, um, or mythic items or, or something. And maybe it's going to be a piece that like evolves would be my guess, because I was actually talking about this with, I believe it was Urz the other day, where we were saying, we kind of almost wish that there was some kind of unique characteristic to characters, because nothing about the game, uh, as you put time, effort, and money into something, nothing about the character seems to stick out as unique to you about your character as compared to the next person who's done the same thing. Now, I don't know whether or not these pieces are going to have any unique aspect to it, uh, but I, I am hoping for that. Uh, finally, what if these items not only granted you Im immense character power, including potentially brand new abilities, but what if they also were enhanced using the massive quantities of accumulated unspent gear and materials that longtime players have piled up over years of collecting and playing? So maybe they're finally going to give us a way to uh, use the heroic tank rewards. Uh, or these Mark 11 Blast Tech weapon mods that I've been having laying around for years, or or you know, Mark 4 stun guns. It'll probably be something like that. Uh, our goal is to not only make the game feel more truly connected to Star Wars Galaxy, but also to reward longtime players for all their dedication over the years. And like players feel like everything they've ever collected and amassed in the game matters. We're excited to talk about this feature more in the coming weeks and months. Now, um, over overall, we didn't get a whole ton of details. Um, it, it was a shorter one, perhaps, but they have teased some things that are, you know, larger. Like we know we're getting, now we know we're getting the Clone Wars. They, you know, gave us that info. Clone Wars, you know, Clone Trooper rework, I should say. Uh, and we're getting some new characters. Probably Kiyadi Mundo would probably be this forehead teaser. Uh, and the thing about this iconic power, I, I'm kind of split on this. Um, I could see it two ways. Uh, one is, I think, once you complete really your favorite character, there's almost a feeling of being a little bummed out because you've been working on a character you like a lot and you're like, he's done. Um, and there, well, it, it's twofold. You feel great because you're done, finally done. But at the same time, it's like, that's it. That's all he's got. So maybe these mythical items that are, you know, have kind of diminishing returns, but you have infinite, you know, stats or something. I'm not quite sure how they're going to represent it. It'll probably be capped out. But maybe that might be a way to continue working on characters you really like. So that's my first my first positive thought. The other thought is it gets me a little bit worried because I currently only have four Gear 13 characters, and that's the Malik team. And I was, wasn't was even going to do the fifth one, Sith Trooper, because personally, I want my next Gear 13 to be like Whopper, somebody fun. But if they make new items, uh, that just means my focus has to be now back on the four characters of the Gear 13. I have yet another piece of gear to put on my squad arena team. Um, and that's a little bit, I feel like that would be a little bit of a bummer. But we don't have details yet, so it's just speculation. So I'm not going to get, like, bent out of shape about it. Uh, it does, you know, more gear pieces is is a little bit, um, you know, a little bit, you get a little worrisome when new gear pieces get brought up. But I, I like the way, I like the way they introduced it. I'm going to try being optimistic on this one. Um, I'm curious to know what other people think about this, whether or not we need new gear pieces. And I'm kind of curious where they're going to throw them because if it's their mythical item, like Darth Maul's lightsaber, right? And you have a lightsaber. He doesn't just acquire the lightsaber at some point. Like his lightsaber is part of him. So do you get like a separate slot, like a seven slot that's like independent of him? And that's the one and you slowly power that up over time. Or is it like once you're gear 13, then one edition of a spot opens and now that's going there. I, it's probably the gear 13 one as a way to even more monetize gear 13. Cause then if you have these items that are ridiculous, let's say they're really, really strong, like even more than gear 13 finishers. Okay. Uh, but you're required to be gear 13 to do it. Then it increases the incentive for gear 13. Uh, but it will also make some of the raids easier and some of the territory battle thing easier. So there's some kind of pros and cons as we're going down the rabbit trail of thinking about this. Um, we'll have to see how it plays out. It has a chance to be something really cool because I don't really mind the concept that they explained of like showing Darth Maul's saber, you know, or Vader's mask or, you know, I, I don't mind that concept. And I think it would be cool to have ways individually to feel like the way you put the effort into your character matters. I think that would be pretty cool personally. 
Um, so if they added something like that into the game, we'll have to see. It's all speculation. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of it, because I'm, I'm kind of going to be optimistic and say, hopefully it's a cool thing. Uh, I hope they know what they're doing. I'm sure they do. Why not? Uh, let's let's enjoy these Darth Maul Gear 13 lightsaber pieces and all that. We'll see how it goes. So cheers, guys. I love you all. Uh, thanks for watching the video. And I guess we're going to find out in the future here <laughs> what this all means. He says in the coming weeks, um, in the coming weeks and months here. So hopefully within the next week or two, we get info. OK, guys, cheers. That's the road ahead for today. Uh, and I'm going to be doing that Wampanator video. I tried doing it live stream. We started at 59% in part one and we got, uh, we full cleared except for the six or the 40% we missed in part one or whatever. So the next video you see for me is going to be that Wampanator full clear if I can uh, <laughs> get in and not mess it up. All right, guys, cheers. Love y'all and have a great day. Bye-bye.